This is the second part of 5.3, which is a horizontal stretch and compression of the sine and cosine graph. Now, the horizontal stretches and compressions are a little bit difficult to understand, so I'm just going to go over the same concept but with a parabola. In a parabola, the letter that has to do with your horizontal stretches and compressions was your C value. For some reason, they changed it to a K value when you're doing the sine and cos graphs, but I want you to know that they're not talking about this K value, they're talking about this guy. Notice that that C was very close to the X, it was actually within these brackets, whereas your A value was on the outside. Well, that's exactly the same here, in that your K value is very close to your X within invisible brackets, and your A value would be in front of your sine or your cos. So that's how you know that you have a horizontal factor. Now your k value, if it's greater than 1, so on a number line, you have 0 and then 1, and negative 1, any of these guys are going to give you a horizontal compression. Well, let's just take a look at it a little bit closer. If k was 4, so in other words bigger than 1, Normally we would think, oh, it's a horizontal stretch, but remember that the horizontal guys were always the opposite of what we would think. So it's not a stretch, it is a compression, and it's not by a factor of four, it's by a factor of one quarter. If k is in between zero and one, so right here, maybe if it was one over four, or 0 0.25, then again, we would normally think, oh, it's a compression, but it's not. It's the opposite, which is a stretch. By a factor of 1 over k, which is 1 over a quarter, so instead of thinking by a factor of a quarter, it's actually by a factor of 4. If we go into the other side of the number line, all these guys, so if k is less than negative 1, you're going to still get the compression, but you're going to have that negative component, which was a reflection. Since we're talking about horizontal, it's not um, a reflection over the x-axis, that would be a vertical reflection. It's actually a reflection over the y-axis, so it flips horizontally. Just like if we were talking about these values, so if it was, say, negative one quarter, you would still get that horizontal stretch, but it would be also an additional transformation, which is a flip in the y-axis. I also want to explain where it says the period of each function is 360 over k. Imagine your sine graph starts at 0 degrees and goes to 360. So the normal um, equation has a period of 360 degrees. But then if you're going to add a k value, let's just give you something like this, that 2 is going to affect your period. So the period is going to be divided by your k, which is 360 degrees split in half, and that's going to be an 80, 180 degrees. That's what we would expect, though, because remember that 2 is going to be a horizontal compression by a factor of a half. So it's going to be half as big as it was before. Maybe look like this. Okay. So it's going to stop at 180 degrees. That's how the horizontals work. Let's take a look at an example. So sketch a one cycle of the graph of y equals cos 3x, where you're going to start x at 0 degrees, and then you're going to go onwards for one cycle. And you're going to also provide the domain and the range of that cycle. So what I've done already is I've set up um, the x and y axis, and we're just going to draw it now. So I'm going to draw the original cos first. Starts at 1, goes to 0, goes down to negative 1, goes back up to 0, and then all the way up to 1 again. Nice and curvy. Okay, now the 3 we know is our k value, which means it's a horizontal compression by a factor of a third. And if we wanted to take a look at the period, a normal period for cos is 360 degrees, but it's going to be divided by your k value, which is 3. So you're expecting 
that you will go from 0 to 120 instead of all the way up to 360. So technically, your graph should end right about here because each of my blocks is worth 30 degrees. Okay. Now, it's not going to be there specifically because the last point on the graph was all the way up here. So technically, it's along the same x value, but it's, uh, let's just move this, all the way up at 1. Okay, now the halfway point of the old graph had a y value of negative 1. So why don't we do a halfway point, which is, I would say, about at 100. So 120 divided by 2. So the halfway point should be at 60. That's going to be at our minimum. And then we began at 0, 1. So that hasn't really changed. But your two x-intercepts from before, these guys right here, those ones are also going to be uh, divided by 3. So 1 third and then 1 third. That one, I guess, didn't really move. Okay, so all your x values have been 1 thirded. <laughs> okay, and then we're just going to connect them. Well, that wasn't done very well, but that's okay. And it's going to look something like this. So it's 1 third of the width that it was before. All right. The next one says to sketch the graph, and now you have the 3 in front of the sine x, but you also have a k value of a half. Now they want it only over the domain of negative 180 to 180. So again, I'm going to start by drawing the sine graph. So this one starts at 0 this time, and I went up by 180s um, just to be able to fit the horizontal stretch from that half. It's going to go up to 1 down and then down further and then back up again. It's going to go like this. So that's one cycle of sine. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it by a factor of 3. So that's a vertical stretch. That means this guy's not going to move and neither is this one or this one because they all have heights of 0. But I will multiply the peaks by 3 and get 3 and negative 3. So now my amplitude has been changed. So we get something like that. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to address the k value. So your k value is a half, which means it's a vertical, sorry, a horizontal um, stretch by a factor of 2. Your normal period would be 360 degrees, but it's going to be divided by a half, which is 720. So now this guy's going to be stretched to 720. This is still going to stay here, but the middle point is going to be doubled. Now it's here. And that point that was red before, now that I've changed green, that one was at the end, 360, is now going to be doubled as well. It's going to be over here. So we have to keep in mind that um, our peaks are still as high as they were, or as low as they were, and then we're just going to connect them. There we go. All right, and I'm going to just continue it on the other side as well. This is going to go all the way over here, and then back up and up further, and then back down. Not drawing very straight today, but that's okay. All right, so that's what it should look like. Now get rid of these guys so that you can see a little bit. Just move those ones over. The smart board is so awesome. Okay, so let's get rid of all that. All right, so that is the sine graph, but it's not within our domain. They said they wanted only from negative 180 to 180. So what we have to do is we're just going to erase everything that's not within those boundaries. So let's get rid of all of this. And then we're also going to get rid of 
all of this. Okay, so your graph is going to look like this. And you're going to write 3 sine 1 over 2. 